If you're a merciful person in general, when someone comes to you and tells you that you hurt their feelings, then you're going to listen to them. You're going to pay attention to them. How would it then be with the Prophet wasallam? even though the Prophet wasallam did not wrong anyone, how would it be if you told the Prophet wasallam that you were hurt by him? Now, as we've gone through many times and will probably still continue to go through, the Prophet ﷺ had such high emotional intelligence that he could sense things, alayhi salatu wasalam. He knew if you were upset with him. He once told Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, in fact, he said, I can tell when you're mad at me even when you don't tell me you're mad at me. She said, how? The Prophet ﷺ said, because when you are pleased with me, you swear by the Lord of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when you're upset with me, you swear bi Rabbi Ibrahim, by the Lord of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So I can tell that there is something going on. So the Prophet ﷺ could sense if you were not feeling good around him ﷺ, or if you felt hurt by him ﷺ. And out of his rahmah, out of his mercy, and out of his empathy ﷺ, he would ask you what was wrong. And even in tense, high stakes situations, we see that the Prophet ﷺ was still held to a higher standard and he used to hold himself to a higher standard. One of the most famous stories that is written in the Quran is the story of Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, Abasa wa Tawalla. It's not a surah that is in one of the longer ajza, one of the longer chapters of the Quran. It's in Juz Amma. Our children will memorize Surah Abasa that he frowned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know the story of Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was a blind man coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi quickly, quickly, quickly. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees him, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he frowns at a blind man. And he did that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was talking to some of the elites of Quraysh who did not used to give him any attention Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he felt like he finally had a chance to talk to them and he finally had their ears. And now Abdullah ibn Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu, not knowing who represented the poor, the downtrodden, comes and he's shouting, Ya Rasulullah, teach me from what Allah taught you. And the Prophet sallallahu abasa. He simply frowned sallallahu alayhi wa and he continued to speak to the elites of Quraysh. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah, right? Admonishing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and holding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to a higher standard, how would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi treat Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum after that? The Prophet sallallahu used to greet him and say, Marhaban. بِمَنْ عَاتَبَنِي فِيهِ رَبِّي مَرْحَبًا بِمَنْ عَاتَبَنِي فِيهِ رَبِّي Welcome to he on behalf whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonished me. So it was a special type of greeting. And we see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then will go out of his way to make sure that Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala anhu has a special place in the community. He is going to give adhan at times. He is someone that though he cannot participate in the battle like everyone else, he's still going to be a flag bearer radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Prophet ﷺ makes sure to include him in all of these different spaces. And the Prophet ﷺ makes sure that the effect of that moment where he frowned at him ﷺ has led to complete blessing for him for the rest of his existence on this earth. And of course, when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there was another incident that the Prophet ﷺ walks by a group of people and there are these young men and it's in a time of battle as well. So it's again, a high stakes situation. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is lining up the troops. And Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says there was this young man from the Ansar that was constantly talking to the people and making them laugh. So they're getting ready for battle and you have this young man that doesn't stop and he's getting out of line, literally, right? And making the others laugh. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he pokes him under the ribs with his stick Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now again, it's understood. He is a military general in this sense, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's getting them ready for battle. But this young man says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Asbirni. He says, let me take my retaliation. I deserve to have retaliation. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he could have told him, are you serious, right? He could have admonished him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam further. He could have explained to him why he poked him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was understood to him and to everyone else that this was for him to calm down and to stay in line and to not continue further disrupting the situation. But instead, when he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Asbirni, give me my revenge, give me my retaliation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes to him and he says, take your retaliation. SubhanAllah, look at his humility, alayhi salatu wasalam. He doesn't say anything else. He doesn't explain his actions. 
He does not belittle the man. He doesn't say to him, who do you think you are? Go home, we'll talk later. He says, go ahead and poke me back. Take your retaliation. This young man then says to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, inna alayka qamisan, wa laysa alayya qamis. He said, O Messenger of Allah, you're wearing a shirt and I'm not wearing a shirt. So when you poked me, it hurt me more, it left a mark because I'm not wearing a shirt. And you on the other hand, don't have to worry about a mark. What does the Prophet ﷺ do? Again, he could have said to him وسلم, like, calm down, just go ahead and poke me and get it over with. Instead, the Prophet Sallallahu he raises his shirt alayhi salatu wasalam. I mean, SubhanAllah, if you're witnessing this, right, what are you thinking about the humility of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And this was all genuine. The Prophet Sallallahu was not doing this with any type of hesitation. It was his natural disposition Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu raises his shirt. After that, the young man, he hugs the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he kisses the ribs of the Prophet Sallallahu instead. And he says, Inna ma hadha, ya Rasulullah. That's all I really wanted from you, O Messenger of Allah. So SubhanAllah, you see in this one exchange that the Prophet Sallallahu was humble enough to ensure that if you felt hurt by him, that you felt like you had your place of recourse. But the more he did that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more he made you love him and the more that he was further honored in the sight of the people and in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Sallu alayhi Sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam